Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Blender Conference. Hello, Blender Heads. Hello, Blender people. We are two uh, professional footwear designers, Jura Shushka, plus 20 years of footwear experience, Josef Turan, five years of uh, footwear experience, both footwear designers, and we are here to present something a little bit different. We are here to present an open source footwear project that we have created ourselves. It ends up with this shoe that we will now share in the audience. Please have a look. Eventually, you will all be persuaded and you will be able to create it your, uh, <laughs> on your own. Yeah. You just download, it, uh, download the files from the website and uh, produce it in your living room. It's an open source project. It's a passion project. It's something that we do after work. We play around, and this is what we will present. Yeah. And I'm very, like, Blender is our number one tool. We use it really frequently and for several years already. And not only Blender gives us a tool to make the design in a new way, Blender also gives us uh, opportunity to think about the open source and open license. So as all of us, all, all of you know here in audience, the power of open source in a Blender, we try to get inspired by this ideology or this freedom and try to apply where this thing, this freedom is applicable on something like a fashion, in our case, a footwear. So we would like to show you our workflow, how it goes from the idea to the physical product when it's run on mainly on Blender engine. Let's get to it. Starts with research. Here is a small sample of shoes that uh, are tested almost on a daily basis. We are both Vivid runners. Uh, we like to run, we like to test shoes, we like to base the design at something, at a, a proper research. One of the very easy research way, uh, or very, uh, very easy way to research stuff is to uh, document it. Here you can see on the left side, running in the open source shoe. Uh, in the middle, there is the barefoot running. And on the right side, it's overlapped over, uh, over each other. So the research is kind of the, the base of anything that we do. This is the classical physical research, however, on slide three, we right away <laughs> jump into Blender. It's really from, in this project, as Josef mentioned, we went from zero to the physical product. And research really, or building a shoe, really starts from the feet, because shoe is the thing around the feet. So as you can see on the image, that's a picture of my, sh of my feet. Uh, I used a professional 3D scanner for, for the feet. And this data from the scanner was just imported to the Blender, and that's where the journey started. And it continues. <laughs> uh, Blender creates this kind of a digital playground, uh, kind of a workshop in which you can uh, play with the product without making your hands dirty, basically. So that is to illustrate here as well. Uh, you can test lots of things in this digital sphere. Uh, you can play around with it uh, mm. before you start manufacturing it. And it's great to see the community behind the Blender, because actually many things that we applied on in our workflow, in our process, actually came and get inspired by the people that we see here, like something what you use for a movie, for a CG, for what other aspects we just see. OK, that applies for us. We, it, can, it can help us. So it's, it's really powerful. The first thing to design uh, on the shoe is always a last. So the shape of the foot. And Blender helps with this a lot because? Yeah, there is a lot of analytics behind, a lot of measurements, because shoe needs to fit nicely on your feet. So we are using geometry nodes to do all the measurements uh, we can interactively measure any diameter of the last. We can grade the last to the, multi to the old sizes that we have. I think we can jump to the next slide. Currently, the, we graded the shoe uh, in uh, nine sizes, but of course, it's, it can be graded and scaled in any size. So again, it's, uh, it's great to play. 
and Blender enab enables it. The next step is always designing the midsole, so the bottom of the foot. Here are visualizations of how to start with it. Where, does the, where, do, where are the pressure points on the foot? Where are, uh, uh, where are the bones touching the ground? Mm. Like, how do I uh, see it in the 3D? This is all enabled uh, within Blender. Mm. And you right here uh, has a point about the dynamic stuff as well. Yeah, because as, as we mentioned, we are footwear professionals. We work or we have experience with other like dedicated footwear softwares. But really, the Blender gives us opportunity to visualize things that I don't see how I can achieve in other than, how to call it, gaming software that will allow you to whatever you imagine. So we do uh, static visualization. We do uh, dynamic visualization. We can mimic the shoe or feet in the movement. We can see visualize where the bones are, we can see and uh, think about where will be the, the some point of um, hard surfaces. Or like we can visualize too many things and at early stages. Where the flex that's points very, are very important. So this is for the midsole design, and it can be as simple as. Uh, being able to grab all the elements together. So there are many traditional footwear 3D softwares. Uh, we will not name them today. But there it's not possible to grab the midsole and the upper together and just tweak it. Of course, this is an overkill, kind of. You will not design the shoe like this. But it's a simple tool like this already improves the footwear design workflow tremendously. For Blender designers, this is nothing special. This is everyone knows that we can do it. But really, I'm not aware of any other software when, at the same time, I can build and redesign and reshape the shoe last, the bottom, the outsole, and the upper. Because, for example, if I want to uh, make a speci specifically fitting shoe for any other feet, I can change the width, I can change the uh, the, the drop, and all the diameters. If I do changes on my shoe last, automatically is connected to the outsole, and that's amazing and powerful thing. We are talking about the footwear 3D softwares. Of course, we are aware of different polygonal softwares, but Blender enables it, and we can design the shoes inside. When we are satisfied with the shapes, with the last, with the bottom, we go into rapid prototyping. And I'm sure you are all aware of 3D mm -hmm. printing. Here, especially on the, side, uh, on the right side, you can see the last number 42, so the same size, but with different widths. And yeah, you can visualize as much as you can in a Blender, but then to actually hold it in hand and be able to compare, those small differences play a big difference in uh, the final product yep. of the shoe. As, as our goal, it's not to end on the visuals, our goal is not to make a renders and put it out, uh, on our portfolios. We are really creating a functional footwear. So yeah, ability to 3D print overnight uh, design, validate it next morning. It's really speed up the process uh, dramatically. And it can be a simple, small 3D printer. Yeah. Here again, a very easy trick. Sometimes we are challenged, hey, OK, you work for a big company. You have access to whatever machinery you have. But in this specific project, it's uh, like we, we finance the research and development by ourselves. It's really our hobby. We don't have the budget for uh, high-end machines. So for example, here we, we are using the Prusa machine or any low-end, mid-end uh, 3D printers. But if your 3D printing uh, plate is too small for your object, just cut it in two, make it in as a two pieces, glue it afterwards, and trada, you can validate your design. You print it overnight. Next morning, you come to the office, you see the thing, and you can go back to the blender and do more interactions. Interactions works magic. <laughs> and it's. Always for designing for us, it's, it's a lot about the speed and uh, efficiency. So, especially in the concepting phase, we try to keep one master file that rules all the others. So, in the concepting, we are preparing uh, the maps, 
that we apply on the object. So all the upper part of the shoe is often just as one single object that it's map mapped. And that allows us to make a quick modification and iterations. And those maps are used for rendering, for the uh, visual check or check on the screen. And plus, those models are great also for a 3D print. And also? And also, the same master file is a source, of, uh, data source, that we actually export the, the curves to dedicated 2D pattern making software for, for footwear developers. We export files there, and those files go directly to the cutting machine. So that's the connection from Blender to, to physical world that also works perfectly, and we don't have any issue with that. It's a very quick iterative way how to produce lots of designs, visualize them, theoretically 3D print them. This is the, already the last step when you are starting to laser cut it, as I think you can see on the next slide as well, where when I have the patterns, I bring them to a laser cutter, cut it out, stitch it together. In two hours, I have an upper that I can uh, start using or stitch it to my previous shoe. Or I use a CNC router, get the files for the bottom, CNC route it out of the foam, easily available, mm. and glue it together. And here I have a shoe. Yeah. And with the shoe, I can start running. <laughs> this is pretty exciting. And obviously, we know that not everyone has at home the, the machines like CNC, like uh, 3D printer, laser cut. For that, we are closely tied up with the Fab Labs. That's the mm, global digital fabrication labs that are everywhere. You can find one in Amsterdam. You can find it in other places. You just go there. You take your training, and they allow you to use their machines. So today on the board, there are like uh, 2,500 labs. So actually, our open source design can be produced and manufactured almost anywhere on the planet. But the design is kind of finished, and we are we're very happy. To, uh, we are always very happy to validate it, to start running with it. Uh, you can see on the right side, I ran a marathon. In the middle, Yura ran a Košice marathon. Just a couple of weeks ago, there are some trail races. It's a proper running shoe, and that was also the goal in the beginning. We want to make a shoe that you can run in. <laughs> it's not just something that you step into and take a picture of. This is a serious shoe that you can all make yourself. It yeah. was enabled by Blender. <laughs> One of the marketing statement that we are using is that this is the world's fastest open source running shoes. That's you can true. guess how many competitor, competition is this field, but maybe that's uh, the way and recommendation for anyone. If you want to be unique, just do something completely different. And maybe I will just say the side story. At the beginning, when the project started, I had like the goal for this year. What about if we can make a marathon under three hours in these open source shoes? So we te team up uh, with Josef. And actually, he almost ruined the project because he ran this sub three marathon before we launched because the project. The so like, OK, and what are the challenges now for this year? Why, when we received the, achieved the goals <laughs> before we launched the project. but. We the point going. of the slide is you can really run in the shoe. I'm wearing it right now. It has 250 kilometers on it. One of the first uh, uh, samples has, has like 600, 700 kilometers on, uh, on it. It's a serious running shoe. We yeah. enjoy validating it. Yeah. And How it's a lot about the sustainability. Like People are asking, hey, guys, why I need to make shoes by my own? Otherwise, I can go to the internet, click, and have shoes tomorrow. Uh, you have control over the design. If you manufacture shoes by yourself, you know how you made it. If something goes wrong, you can fix it, you can change it. So yeah, there is a freedom that the other shoes uh, hardly can, can offer. You should go right now and download them. <laughs> However, Blender does not stop there. As you saw in the beginning, uh, you can easily create a powerful visuals. And uh, we call this part of the presentation this kind of a digital photo studio in which you can create uh, the digital twin uh, of, the, of the shoe. And there is four simple tricks uh, to make a better footwear visual in Blender. First one, uh, use a 3D scan, retopologize it, keep it in low poly, 
the 3D scan doesn't have to be perfect, just uh, make it as low poly as possible. And tip number two, keep the low poly and drive it through modifiers. Those four are the best ones, subdivision, solidify, especially when you split the three materials, so the back face, the rim, and the front face. Uh, it's easily uh, uh, editable in the, in the modifier tab and the Boolean. Boolean for perforation, for eyelets, uh, it works. Again, rather quick iteration, strong visuals. The third, maybe the most difficult one, how do I do stitching? If I really want to go for a realistic visual, we recommend to create a, a stitching or to model the stitching. So you model the stitch, and then in video two, you drive it through a array modifier and through a curve modifier on the surface that you want to apply the stitch to. Looks strong. Uh, fourth, round, la round laces in the curve. If the lace is uh, round, just uh, use a curve. If it's slightly off, uh, you can use the profile curve to, uh, to change it. If it's a flat, a flat lace, model it. I would say uh, much easier. And finally, you have a digital twin. You have a digital twin, and of course, you're not happy with it because it's <laughs> a render that you have created, and uh, uh, it does not look as good as you want it. So you think, ah, oh, maybe I uh, would like to make it more realistic. The easiest way, or rather quick way for a, uh, for a strong visual, take a picture of a background of a real situation and use this picture as a photo background. On the right side, you can see that the, uh, the plane is slightly modeled to give a bit of shadows, and then there is a glue bottle downloaded from Sketchfab, I think, a uh, free asset to give it more realism. And ta-da, here is a rather strong visual that you can use on the website, on the poster, product visualization. You are all familiar with it. It's more than possible in Blender for footwear. It's widely used, uh, not so much talked about in footwear industry, product or footwear product visual visualization in Blender. We don't stop there. Of course, when you have this digital twin, you can then start changing materials, changing colors. So this is one of the simplest. You change colors, you make it rotate, uh, you show it to yourself, you show it to other people who would like to have it in, uh, in different colors. Yeah. You don't have to source the materials in different uh, colors. Especially you, you just do it digitally. Yeah, you can nicely save the time if you know that you have this and that material in such a color, even from this pre-prototyping phase. You can see what you have on the, uh, on the desk, what kind of physical materials. You can imitate it, and you can see how the shoe it looks like, and then, okay, maybe the, the midsole doesn't fit in color, and you can source that. So it also helps for the, in the color management for the manufacturing part that you can know what you will get at the end. So very powerful. And last but not least, you can explain the product. Simple exploded view. Uh, it's now used to explain the product to you one more time, so uh, that you go to the website, opensource.com, download the shoe, and start making your own footwear. Here it's a simple visualization made in Blender uh, <laughs> through the digital twin of footwear. Strong. Uh, if you would like to know more about how to make it, or maybe question to the audience, is there anyone interested to make the open source shoes? Oh, yeah. that was the, so far the, 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 the highest. <laughs> For the people who see it on the video, it was almost 50% as I counted it. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's our website. On the website, you can find and download all production files needed for a 3D printer, for CNC, for, for the pattern making. As we mentioned, everything is uh, licensed under Creative Commons license. So you can do, you can make, you can produce. If you're stuck somewhere in the midway, try to contact us. We, we are really more than willing to help you if there is some obstacle. And uh, yeah, if you are able to finish the shoes, absolutely uh, send us a picture. We would like to see more makers, uh, more people are trying to work on sustainability and do the things in their own way. Yes, please share. There is also the files, uh, the digital files. So all the Blender scenes that you have seen in this presentation, they are also on the website. It's not just the production uh, files. It's also the 
digital visualization files. So mm. please download them, look, have a look at the stitches, mm. have a look at the use of the modifiers, uh, and let us know. Yeah. Send us pictures of your new running shoes. Oh. If you are a footwear designer, maybe that could be a good source of information or the exercise. Please jump in, take the file, use the file, share your finding impressions. We are looking to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. If you have any questions, reach out. <laughs>